Well, hi guys, it's Tom. Um, this is a video response to uh, the very mysterious Perry Urban video about um, things that are afoot. Uh, things that are afoot. Let's see. Uh, Perry, your question, where will we be in 10 years? Uh, here in the, in the United States, there's a probably apocryphal uh, statement attributed to uh, a Hall of Fame baseball catcher, Yogi Berra, who, um, who, uh, who said predicting, uh, prediction is hard, especially about the future. So uh, who knows where we're going to be in 10 years. But I, I have some thoughts, so here they are. Um, you know, the explosion of YouTube onto the social scene is something that I've been very interested in since I've been here, which is, you know, now going on a, a year in April. And uh, I'm getting ready to do this presentation that I mentioned uh, last, last week um, at the TED conference. So I'll put the, uh, a link to the conference up in the uh, description of this video. And um, in that presentation, uh, a little mini seminar, I talk about why people should consider vlogging on YouTube. And uh, being a management consultant, you know, all management consultants have to, uh, at some point in any conversation with anybody, uh, present a little two by two matrix, you know. And in that two by two matrix, I have, you know, the, the, the two, the four cells kind of look like this on the, uh, uh, on the y-axis, I have um, personal and business, and on the x-axis, I have watch and produce, and I go ahead and fill in those cells in the, in the little talk about why you should consider vlogging. In other words, why you should consider watching YouTube vlogs. That's a form of vlogging. It's vlog consumption, right? Uh, why you should watch YouTube videos from a personal perspective, why you should produce YouTube videos, why you should consider producing YouTube videos from a personal perspective, and then from a business perspective, why you should watch YouTube videos, why you should consider producing YouTube videos. And uh, basically, for me, it's all about uh, being able to connect with other people who have similar interests to yours and diverse interests from yours. I mean, it, um, you know, one of the things that I find disturbing about current trends in individualizing media is that people start to kind of get focused only on the things that we're already interested in and not to have that experience of discovery, you know, finding out about stuff that you didn't know you were interested in. It's kind of like the difference between having an online news service send you headlines about stuff that you already care about versus just kind of, you know, thumbing through the paper and coming across an article about something that you never knew you were, you, you never knew about and became interested in as a result of that. I, I think that the enormity of YouTube enables you to do both. It enables you to both focus on stuff that you're already interested in. Uh, I think, by the way, parenthetically, that the current category system that's being used for YouTube is pretty primitive. It's a blunt instrument that they're using. And over time, as the, uh, the search technology gets better and as we get better at tagging our videos and knowing how to uh, look for things that are interesting to us, we're going to get a lot better at that, just as we've gotten a lot better at Googling things, right? So, uh, so I think that the, the, uh, the ability to find things that you know you're interested in and the ability to discover things that you didn't know that you were going to be interested in is enormous. And that curiosity about things is what I think is going to drive the, uh, the exploratory aspect of, uh, online video. Now, whether or not YouTube as an entity is going to continue to be the sort of dominant force that it is now in the in the market, who knows? You know, we've all seen great starts by companies end up um, 
uh, faltering because things happen. Companies stumble, competitors come on the market, things happen. It's a dynamic situation. That's why predicting is hard about the future. But right now, what we do know is this. You asked for some figures. As of January, and I'll post the link to this, uh, to this site in the description. Uh, as of January, YouTube had about 31 and a half million unique visitors a month coming to the, the channel. Uh, live video has 2 million uh, uh, unique visitors a month. So you see the, you know, the order of magnitude difference. So there's no question that YouTube is and will probably continue to be the market leader, the brand name in this, uh, in this internet space for a considerable time to come. Now, what kind of communities do we want is an entirely really different question because there we get into how comfortable are we all going to become with with establishing and maintaining relationships of a community nature in this kind of a setting. I think we've seen that the difference between uh, blogging and vlogging, for example, is enormous in terms of participation and interaction. People respond, I think people respond much more uh, easily in to, to, to vlogs than they do to blogs. Uh, so that encourages me to think that there's going to be more in the way of community uh, interaction in the vlog world than there is in the blog world. Um, as for your your secret and uh, the impact that that uh, whatever this secret is going to have on us, uh, I for one uh, look forward to seeing what's going to happen uh, with commercialization of video blogs, just as I looked forward to seeing what was going to happen with the commercialization of blogs. Uh, when blogs started to get commercialized and on blog pages, there was a tremendous amount of, of uproar. I happen to remember the, the, the beginnings of the internet when in fact it was illegal to do anything commercial on the internet. And the, be the beginnings of commercialization, the beginnings of advertising on websites was met with, again, an enormous outcry of, oh, that's it, we've, you know, we're, we're doomed. We're never gonna be, nothing good is ever gonna come out of the internet again. So, uh, so I think as far as the, the future is concerned, I heard a great quote this morning from a historian um, a guy named John Meacham, who's a, an editor of Newsweek magazine, and he said, the future always manages to outwit certainty. And that, you know, I think sums it up. The, whatever we think we know for sure now, the future will outwit us and demonstrate that we didn't know something because the future's chaotic. So what's going to happen? Nobody knows for sure, but I do think that, that this development, this enormous interest and the enormous utility of online video is only going to continue to make people more um, uh, interested in getting involved. People who sit back and watch video blogs for a while, at some point, come on, come on, you always want to come in here and do something similar. So uh, join the rest of us who are out here uh, blathering on and uh, trying to figure out what the future is going to be like and make the kind of community that you want to you want to see. I think for me, that's what brought me into this was the ability to actually try to form up what this was going to be like rather than just sit back and complain about it when it went a different direction. So Perry, as always, thanks a lot. Great to see you. You know, I forgot something and I wanted to be sure that I got it in here, Perry. You, um, you referred specifically to Renetto uh, when you talked about leadership in uh, online videos. Uh, I just wanted to say that, that I agree with you completely. I think that uh, despite what it, the, the kinds of controversies that Renetto brings upon himself and draws to himself, um, his latest video in particular and several of his videos, I think, demonstrate a new way of living your life in public that um, is also exemplified by people like Zipster, who, you know, with, with his uh, father's passing and his public um, 
sharing of that experience with the YouTube community, uh, I think it's, uh, it, it, it is a new way that we have of living together. Certainly Peter, Geriatric, 1927, again, a similar kind of a pioneering way of communicating with people about things of importance about our lives. These are things that used to be um, very personal and very private that now we live out together in public. And uh, uh, many, many, many more of us are getting very comfortable talking about things that we would never talk about with strangers before. Uh, because of seeing other people doing it, experiencing the kind of reactions that we have when they do it, and then experiencing the kinds of reactions we get when we live our own lives out in public. So uh, it's still, of course, very difficult for many of us to do so, but I think, I think it, it signals a very important change about how we live our lives together today versus how we did just a year ago, in fact. So... I wanted to be sure to get that point in here as well. Thanks. Bye.